Hello everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. I have another Ghostbusters Playmobil review for you today. This is uh, set 9219. It doesn't have an official name, but it is their uh, firehouse headquarters. So the box is huge. I can't really keep it in frame all at once. So I'm just going to kind of pan down so you can see the whole thing. Obviously you get the library ghost up here. You get Janine in kind of a civilian outfit. You get Ray, you get Lewis Tully, and then you get Egon in kind of a Dr. Fancy Duds with a lab coat. Um, so it's a pretty cool little scene here on the front. Uh, it is mirrored on both sides of the box. You can see the picture is here again, and then it just kind of shows you on this side uh, Ray and Janine. And then if we take a look at the other side, it shows Egon, Tully, and the library ghost. So just showing you all the figures you get in this, in this box. If you take a look on the back, you're going to see one kid who's just having a blast playing with all his Playmobil <laughs> Ghostbusters toys. Uh, now everything in this scene is not included in this box. This is all of the sets they sell all together in one giant group shot. Um... Slimer is a separate set that comes with this hot dog cart guy. Uh, I've reviewed previously the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man set, the uh, Ecto-1 set. Uh, Egon down here comes with a ghost that's, I guess, not pictured here. And then you have the Vinkman, Dana, and the Terror Dog set. So if you zoom in down here, uh, there are a ton of languages in this little red block, but one of them is English, and it says items, and it lists off a bunch of set numbers, and it says each sold separately, not included with this set. So, just to let you guys know. This over here is everything that you get. And of course, we'll take a look at all of it, but you get the figures, you get a ton of furniture, some equipment, uh, the firehouse itself. It's a lot of stuff to put together, so if you are thinking about picking this up, just know that it is going to take you... Uh, I'm trying to think. It took me probably about an hour. Just because there's a lot of small pieces to sort through. And they come in random bags, not necessarily grouped together in the most logical sense. So you kind of just like, oh, I need this piece. And you just kind of have to either dump it all out into a big pile. Or open up each bag separately and kind of go through each one until you find what you need. So it's not ridiculous, but it is uh, a little bit time consuming. So we're going to go ahead get the box out of here. And we'll take a look at the firehouse itself. So here's the front of the firehouse. Uh, you can see through the windows I have some of the stuff set up inside. And they're not windows. It's just open space. There's no glass paneling or plastic paneling or anything like that. Uh, I don't know why, but this area, particularly right here, strikes me as kind of plain. Like there was supposed to be something inlaid in there. And I just don't know why, but I nothing's missing or anything. Just looks a little weird to me. But you can see you have these nice kind of brick panel pieces that pop into the sides. And that looks pretty good. Uh, coming down to the front here. Uh, I'll get a little bit closer so we can take a look at the street level. So getting a good look here at street level. You can see there's a door. This is a sticker. This does not open in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's just a sticker here on the plastic piece. And basically how this thing works is there's kind of two walls, you know, put into a corner like this. And then the whole rest of it is open. There's no roof. There's no other back or side. And we'll get around to that side in a minute. But you have your Ghostbuster sign right here. There's a sticker on both sides. Identical sticker. So that's kind of neat. You have a little fire hydrant right over here. These yellow pieces, or these are yellow stickers, I should say. This is a black piece that's inlaid here. Now you can take a look at the door. And you'll see it's one big door that kind of works like a garage door does. The uh, firehouse in the movie actually has two large doors that open up, I believe, inward. Uh, and then there's like a littler door inside for the you know people to go in and out of. They decided to go a much simpler route and just go. There's a little indent here for your finger and it just opens up like a garage door. So I get that, you know what I mean? It's it's a little bit more basic and not 100% screen accurate, but I understand. Certainly easier for getting the car in and out. Uh, taking a look at the sides again, these are little window, uh, really just grids. Again, you can put your finger through the actual window part. And these just inlay from the other side, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Up top, very similar. These are just... Um, Brick pieces that you just push in and they snap into place. And then up top, similar deal to the front. Just 
snap these pieces in. This, I think, slides in. Might stay in once you have it snapped in, but you push that in from the side. It all snaps into place. So this is nice detailing. The windows are the same as the bottom windows. Nothing super fantastic there, but it looks nice. I think when all put together, it looks good. I kind of wish it had a roof, but not a huge deal. So let's spin this around and we'll get to look at the inside. So here's the first floor, pretty open. As you can see, not a lot to it. That's primarily because the Ecto-1 is just meant to be housed here, which I'll bring it in in a second to show you guys off. Um, but yeah, like I said, the garage door just kind of hides up here in the ceiling um, and then goes back down. This is the kind of pole that they slide down, and I'll just use Ray here because I have him handy. Um, you just clip them on their hands, one on each side like that, and then you just raise them up. And it just falls like a rock. There's nothing special to it. There's not really any kind of neat gimmick. He just falls. I mean, you could just as easily drop him yourself. Not attached to anything. I mean, at least it kind of keeps him a little bit in place, I guess. I don't know. To me, it's not the best execution of the pull slide down gimmick. Uh, what I have most to compare to is the... Um, well, actually, even the Lego Ghostbuster Firehouse was a very similar principle. In the original real Ghostbusters Firehouse playset from the 80s, it was kind of a like corkscrew effect on the pole so that you would put them on the little platform and then the platform would spin all the way down until it landed. And it took a little bit longer. You know, the friction helped it from just falling like a rock. But it did definitely take up a lot more space. So I can understand how in the effort of space they went with this. But I was thinking about the Lego Firehouse and it, I think believe it had a corkscrew effect as well so that they swizzled down. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just not very inventive. It's just using gravity to just fall like a rock. In that case, I feel like you don't even really need the pole. It just is gravity. So it just falls. You can just drop them like yourself. <laughs> Look, I'm sliding. Got it. <laughs> in any case that gimmick is eh but the gimmick i really like on this floor is the containment unit in the back here and i'll see if i can get a little bit closer so i can show this off for you guys um you can see this is a sticker here there is a sticker above that and a couple of plastic tubes you want to focus for me there we go um so this is one big sticker in the back. This is a separate sticker here. You have the plastic tubes you just uh, connect in yourself. And then how this works is um, this is supposed to act like a lock, but it doesn't actually lock anything. So you can open this in either position. But this folds down, and then you can see the trap gets inserted like this. And then closes up and then you're supposed to lock it in place and then you would pull this to you know figuratively empty it and then <laughs> close it back up and then you could unlock it and open it again and then pull the trap out so i think that's really cool i like that a lot it's a lot of detail um i'm trying to think again as far as other containment units i had to compare it to the original 80s one was like a big giant block that just sat separate from the entire playset, and you could just open up a trapdoor and drop them in. Uh, the Lego one, I believe, is somewhat similar to this, but not as intricate. So I really like this one. I think they did a great job with this one. Um, let me bring in the Ecto one. And again, this is sold separately, so if you want the Ecto one, you have to buy a separate set. But you can see it fits in here very nicely. Roll the door up. Rolls out. I have it a little bit too close to the one side, but rolls out very easily. Oops. You kind of have to line it up. <laughs> There's a small margin for error. Oh, I don't have the door open all the way. That's why it's giving me trouble. Sorry, I don't have a lot of room on my review station here to have it roll all the way through. But it fits in the bay very nicely. It enters through the door very nicely. So I like it a lot. I think that's really cool. Ecto-1 fits great. Containment unit is awesome. Um, the sliding pole, not so much. But let's go ahead and check out the second floor. Alright, so I'm going to try and th uh, show you the second floor here. But unfortunately, this staircase is very much in the way. And once you have it bolted in, 
it's kind of in there for life. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to try to show you. This is like Egon's lab area. A um, couple of accessories you have here. A little pizza box. This is a sticker on top. And then you can open this up. And there is a pizza inside which has a sticker on the top of it. But it's a pretty good little sticker. I think they did a nice job. All the fixins there. Well, they don't usually put big pieces of tomato on top of a pizza, but that's a discussion for another day. So pretty cool little uh, piece pizza box there. Oops, flying out of my hand. Uh, so that's pretty neat. You get a little camera with a tripod, so he can record his experiments. Put that off to the side. You have this little bench that comes with some accessories. You have a couple of flasks on there. Uh, you have a little microscope, which is ever so tiny. But you can spin it so you can use the different uh, magnifying lenses. So I think that's a pretty excellent little detail there. Very neat. Um, the two flasks are not a whole lot to speak of. They're just clear little hot pink flasks for some reason. And then you have this kind of almost like medical tray. Uh, it does have spinning wheels on the bottom. So that's kind of cool. Uh, up here we'll get our first look at some of the figures. We have Ray. Pretty standard looking. Says stance on the side. Has all the nice side printing there. For the elbow pads and the Ghostbuster logo. Standard articulation. Head can spin side to side. Arms move around. 90 degree bend in the waist. So we'll revisit Ray and the other figures later, uh, but I'll just show them off real quick. Here's Lewis wearing a crazy helmet from the movie. You can, of course, take that off if you wish. Oops, and I'm dropping everything. But he's wearing the outfit that he wears in this scene in the movie, the striped shirt unbuttoned or only partially buttoned when he is Vince Glortho, key master of Gozer. And then here is Egon, in kind of a sweater vest with a shirt and tie underneath and a uh, lab coat. Even has some pockets printed on there. Pretty cool. And then he's got a little, like, helm Not helmet, but it's a flashlight he can wear on his head. So that's kind of funny as well. Uh, taking a look here at the other accessories. You have a polygraph machine. And you can see some stickers here. There's actually one sticker here and one sticker here, so you kind of have to line them up. It's kind of a pain, but Ghostbuster sticker, then you have a gauge there. So that's polygraph machine. Um, you have a little chair. Not too much to look at there. You have a little stool. Again, not much to look at. You have this, um, which is a television screen, which has, when Lewis is wearing the helmet on the movie, the television screen is picking up the uh, silhouette of the dog or the heat signature of the dog. So you have that there on the television, which is pretty neat. That's a sticker. Uh, then you just have these three opening drawers. They're all empty right now. But they do all open. So I'm going to put that back in the corner there. Uh, last up, you have this bookshelf, which I'm going to try to focus on. You have some pots and pans here on the bottom. I guess if they want to make dinner. I think it's funny that they include the pots and pans, but they don't have like a kitchen area. So that's a little bit weird. Uh, you have this like pitcher or big clear pot making coffee maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, then you have this kind of translucent green jar. Again, just a little bit of vague accessories just kind of thrown in here uh this is an actual accessory that i think is pretty cool tobin's spirit guide they always reference that in the movie so that's pretty cool and then you have this little like thing of test tubes and they can all be individually removed so just a couple random like some science some cooking accessories um I'm not really sure why the cooking accessories are included, but the rest kind of makes sense to me. I think the polygraph machine is pretty cool. I like that a lot, and that has wheels as well, just like the medical table, which I'm going to try to put back in here. Every time I try to put it back in here, I end up knocking something over. 
Ooh. There we go. So over here you just kind of have a railing, like a little balcony. You can look over the side, but the room kind of ends there. It's just a, like a, this is one railing solid piece that you just peg into the floor. Put our chair and stool back in. And then the camera. And of course, you know, these don't have to be put in these areas. You can position them anywhere you want. You can move stuff around, play with it however you like. And like I said, I apologize for this staircase because it's literally right in the middle of every shot. Kind of a bummer, but very cool accessories for the lab. I like that a lot. We'll go ahead and we'll get into the top floor here. So the third floor pair is kind of the office where Janine works and takes calls and I assume does billing and things like that. Um, you can see the buzzer over here on the side when she hits the alarm to let them know they have a job to go to. Um, you have this little, uh, let me see if I can get this to focus. There we go. It's a newspaper. You can see here it says PM Today for Ghostbusters. has a cool group shot down here. So, pretty neat little newspaper accessory. Uh, to round out the office, you have, and I apologize, this pulls in the way. Desk chair. Doesn't actually roll. Just makes it look like it has rollers. Uh, you have a computer, which has a map, which I assume is showing off their next job. Computer keyboard. You have this desk that everything sits on. Very basic. Drawers do not open for this one. So, try to set everything back up here. And then you have a little desk lamp. You have a very short little floor lamp. And then you have this uh, phone, which you can take out of the clip so that a figure can hold it. So that's kind of neat. I like that. I think the phone looks pretty good. And then you have this little kind of hutch here in the back. You can open the drawers, although sometimes it's kind of sticky. Or I should say, just it's, they stick. It's hard to get them to open. I don't know why. This bottom one seems to open easily enough. The others do not. There we go. So, all four do open, though. For whatever reason, it's just a little tough. I put the phone over there. But again, you can move these accessories around however you like. You could put lab stuff up here if you wanted to. You could put the office stuff on the second floor. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. This is just kind of how the box shows its setup. So that's what I decided to do. So I wanted to take a minute to take a little bit closer look at the figures and the accessories they come with. Now obviously if you've seen any of my other Playmobil reviews, you recognize the Proton Pack. It is the same as all the other ones. Clips on to their backs fairly easily. And then you can take this piece out and have them hold it. You can have them either uh, hold it here so that it looks more like a gun or as I like to do you can clip it on to the actual uh, handle as they would hold it in the movie kind of the wand handle and then this little effects piece clips on to the end to make it look like it's firing the beam. So I always thought they did a pretty good job with the proton packs. Uh, looking at Ray here you can see it says stands has his hair, head can move from side to side, arms can move, 90 degree seat. But yeah, overall I think he looks pretty excellent. I'm going to put him off to the side. Egon, in his sweater vest and tie, and his lab coat. Not really much to show off there. Uh, this is Janine's outfit, I believe, from Ghostbusters 2, when she's working in the office. And the neat thing about this is her skirt piece can move so that when you need to bend her to sit in a chair, it can ride up a little bit to make room for the bend in the, in the waist. So that's kind of nice because if it didn't move, you would run into a problem when you try to bend her at the waist to sit down. So very nicely done. Otherwise, it's a pretty basic outfit, mostly, mostly black, a little bit of green there. Oops, this is the library ghost from the first scene of the first movie. in her, I guess, old woman form, not the crazy monster form she takes towards the end of that scene. Uh, but she can bend at the waist as well. This piece around her neck is a little loose, but it's not going anywhere. It's not going to fall off. 
Not really sure why they included her with the firehouse. I guess just because it was another iconic ghost from the movie and they didn't know what else to include. It's kind of my guess. That wasn't already included in other sets. And then, of course, Lewis Tully with his helmet and his outfit. Pretty basic outfit, but it is pretty screen accurate, I have to say. So, same articulation as all the other figures. Um, now, they include this which I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it's some kind of like spectral tuning fork type thing. I don't remember anything like this from the movies, but it is included here as an accessory or a weapon of some kind. So let the speculation begin. If anyone has any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise you get a PKE meter, which we've seen before, and then you get a ghost trap. You just connect this little piece here to the back and then they would hold this or put it on the ground to step on and then the ghost trap can open so very cool i always thought they did a good job with the proton packs and the ghost traps uh, and all the figures look great i really like all of them i like the inclusion of some kind of different versions of egon and janine because we do get them in the jumpsuits and other sets so i appreciate a little bit different outfits there instead of just including figures you already have and then you gotta love Lewis Tully. And of course you get some equipment. So very cool. Rounding out the figures. I think they did a pretty great job. I like all the figures included in this set. So overall I think Playmobil did a pretty good job with the playset. One quick thing I did forget to show off. It does come with these kind of slime accent pieces just like the Ecto-1 did. So you can just kind of throw them around and pretend you got slimed. Just fun little extra kind of accent pieces if you want to play out a scene. I think that's kind of neat. You can, of course, put them wherever you want. They were a little bit stickier when they first got them, but over time they kind of dry out. So I'm not sure if you stuff them somewhere they'd stay forever. Because I, I personally don't like to stick them around. But they are cool, you know what I mean? They add a little extra uh, detail to the set. But I think they did a pretty good job with the playset. There are things I'd probably change. Um, I kind of wish it had a roof. I know that that probably would impede a little bit of ability to get into that third floor because it is so high up, so I can understand why they didn't. Plus, it saves them money and keeps the cost of the playset down. It was already $70 at Toys R Us, you know, before a sale or any discounts. It retails for $69.99, so it's a little bit of a pricier set, but it's, it's pretty big. I think you get a nice array of accessories and everything, but it only has two walls, which at the end of the day, I don't need a back. And I guess the side should be fairly open. That's kind of how the original playset for the real Ghostbusters back in the day was. But I don't know, without a roof, it just seems really incomplete to me. And I don't know why that is. It really shouldn't matter. Um, the other thing is the front of the firehouse, I feel like, should extend all the way to the end of this uh, floor piece. It should come out here. Because right now you have a fire hydrant right in front of your staircase and when you look at this thing from the front you can see that staircase and i kind of wish it went all the way across it really should complete all the way over i guess they figured it'd be easier to get figures to go up and down the stairs okay but i feel like as big as this pad is you could have put the wall to here and i still would have had no problem having go up the stairs so i don't know um another thing i really wish there's a lot of empty space down here on the first floor I would have loved the closets that they show in the cartoon in the movie. They have, like, basically firehouse closets. Um, you could have easily put them in back in this section here, or maybe even under the steps here. Um, you could have put a panel here, I feel like, for the back, and then had little doors here. Just somewhere to store proton packs, you know, uh, other equipment when you're not using it. I think that would have been really neat. Uh, I could understand if they didn't want to put it under the stairs because they felt like people wouldn't be able to get into this area. But you could have easily put something over here. Uh, just little doors to like put one proton pack each would have been perfect. That's all I really needed. Something like that. Um, I really do love the containment center though. Something I think they did really right. I like that a lot. I love the handle with the locking mechanism. The handle to empty the trap. The trap fits in perfectly. And you can close it with the trap still inside. I think that's a nice tension to detail there. Uh, coming up to the second floor, you know, fairly basic. If you took all the accessories out of it, it really just would be 
the brown floor with nothing going on there. Um, so I think the accessories make it, obviously. The lab stuff is very cool. I'm trying to think of other, like, areas in the firehouse that we saw in any of the movies. There was, like, a kitchen area. I can understand how they only have so much room, and that's kind of a boring area. You would think the lab would make more sense. That's where they kind of invent their gadgets, do research on ghosts and people possessed by ghosts, things like that. And I think it was very important to include Janine's kind of office area, because that's where she takes the calls and lets them know when the call comes in and they need to go out on a job. So I think they picked the right three floors to do for the firehouse, and I do appreciate that. I like the inclusion of the alarm on the kind of wall back there. So I really do think they did a pretty good job with what they did include. Just a couple of things I might have added to it just to kind of make it my perfect firehouse. Um, I would have liked, you know, the two doors as opposed to the fire or the garage type door for the firehouse here. But again, in the interest of space, I think it makes more sense if you had the door opening, you know, like this in and out that would get a little bit more congested in here. So for the sake of planning and space, I think the garage door works, but you know, personally I would like to have it more screen accurate, but just again, a personal preference. Overall, I think it's a fun set. I can nitpick little things here and there, um, but I feel like you're never gonna get a 100% perfect. I feel like, you know, Lego did some things right and some things wrong. Playmobil did some things right, some things wrong. And the original uh, Kenner playset did some things right, some things wrong. I would take pieces of each of the three of them to make like my overall perfect Ghostbuster Firehouse playset. But I think Playmobil did pretty good. I mean, if you're looking for a much cheaper option, I mean, the, the Lego Firehouse is somewhere like $350. It's incredibly detailed. It's very intricate. And it has four walls. But it's also, you know, five times the price of this toy. So I think if you're looking for a nice cost-effective option for a Ghostbuster playset, I think Playmobil's done a really nice job. And that's including the other sets. The Ecto-1 they did is fantastic. Uh, you know, the Stay Puft set, the Slimer set, they're all like $20 or less. So, I mean, you can get a lot of stuff pretty quickly for rather cheap. This is by far the most expensive set in their line so far. And I hope they keep going. I'd love to see sets for Ghostbusters 2. You know, the real Ghostbusters, if they could get a hold of that license, because I feel like you could do the figures in their different colored jumpsuits. You could certainly get more different ghosts and things like that. I feel like there's a wealth of material here to keep making sets. So I hope these are selling well. I hope Playmobil continues to do them. And I think this thing's a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a fun, relatively inexpensive, um, you know, option for a Ghostbuster Firehouse playset, I think Playmobil is your bet. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like and share this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at set number. Let me get the box back here so I get this right. 9219, the Ghostbusters Firehouse from Playmobil. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching.